it's funny because we, we played them so much, all the numbers are all the same, year after year after year. They have a few pieces that have are new, but the truth is we play these guys a bunch. They know us, we know them. Uh, we're all going to boil down to execution and play. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Steelers Live. I am not Missy Matthews, and boy, is she glad about that. This is Tunch Ilkin. Uh, we got a pretty loaded show today, so let's start right away with the practice report for today. This is now the Steelers' second day of practice, and so I think things are starting to crystallize a little bit as we get closer and closer to game day, kickoff being 425 p.m. Sunday at Heinz Field. Uh, as you can see there on the uh, left-hand side, did not practice James Conner and Marcus Gilbert, and those did not practices today make two in a row for those two guys. Tunch, um, I know tomorrow the status report comes out, but uh, I'm not real optimistic. No, I'm not either. And uh, as much as Marcus Gilbert has missed, um, you know, uh, if he didn't practice yesterday or today, I'm not expecting anything out of him. And James Conner as well, you know, with a high ankle sprain, uh, you've got to let that thing heal. And uh, I, I think it's better uh, to just uh, let both these guys, you know, because listen, if, if, if you're not able to go and you're not able to go at a, you know, 100%, nobody's really 100% at the end of the season, uh, but you've got to be close to 100%. And neither one of these guys, because of their injuries, are. Uh, I'm very encouraged that Ben uh, practiced uh, and looked great today. And I'm uh, encouraged by Sean Davis because I was wor a little worried about Sean Davis. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things with bruised ribs, they do heal kind of fast. At the, at the, the onset, uh, the first day after the bruised ribs, it's tough because you can't, you can't sneeze, you can't cough, you, you can't laugh too hard. Anything that you've, you've got to strain your core, that hurts. Uh, but it, uh, Cough, uh, sneeze, yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah right. all that stuff. And so, uh, but so I'm, I'm really encouraged by the way Ben was throwing the ball today. Yeah, Ben, uh, again, that, that would be, I think, the leading uh, on, uh, the leader on the list of good news, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, did not practice yesterday. Full participant today, as was Marquise Pouncey yesterday. Uh, he got a day off uh, for a contusion of the birth certificate, as Mike <laughs> Tomlin has called it. Uh, Sean Davis, with the knee injury, did not practice yesterday, uh, was full today. And Anthony Ciccolo was limited on Wednesday with his ankle injury. He was a full participant today. Uh, one other item, I guess, of news, uh, there still has not been a decision slash resolution uh, on the place kicking situation. Uh, you know, the, the Steelers uh, have tried out a couple of veterans. Uh, today was uh, kicking day out here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex, so Chris Boswell did his normal uh, routine today, uh, but Tunch, there was a little bit of a, a news development. Yeah, Sean Sweezum was here, and he wasn't here as a tryout guy. He was a he, as there. There you see him in the background, and what he was doing was he was watching Boz's technique and uh, and and coaching him up. One of the things, as a player, if you have a veteran guy like Sean Sweezum. Uh, looking over your shoulder and saying, hey, look, your plant foot's more like this. Maybe you should try this. Uh, having an extra set of eyes by, from a guy like Sean Sweezum, you know, he, he definitely can coach you into saying, listen, I know why you're leaving it fat because he's missed to the right a bunch. Uh, and I know why you're pulling it. And so uh, having Sean here was great. Great idea uh, by Danny Smith, the special teams coach. Uh, Boz re received it well, and Sean was excited to help out. So I was talking to him here. You know, one of the things we were talking about throughout the course of the week is, could Sean Sweezum come back? Well, he says no. You know, I thought maybe he could because he's playing hockey, but he says no, he's done. So he is here in a coaching capacity, and uh, what better uh, advice to get from someone that's been through this, done it, and uh, owns that T-shirt? Um, okay, one of the this is also Coordinator Thursday. Uh, we heard from Randy Feekner at the top of the show. Uh, Keith Butler also, you know, I, I think that Keith Butler, when you look at the amount of gray hair he has, uh, might have something to do with what Randy Feekner was talking about in that uh, show opening soundbite about having played the Patriots so much lately. I think you've got to be, uh, I think you have, a, have to have a variety of things that you can go into the game 
and, and play him with. You can't play him with the same stuff. You can't, uh, in the first half and the second half, you can't do it. Uh, you know, he, he sees it. They do a good job of, of looking it up on the, on the sidelines, and, and they do a good job in going in at halftime and see what you've done defensively, and they come out and, and usually adjust to what you've done that's hurt them a little bit. So we've got to make sure that we, we've, uh, uh, we're in good position to play them in the second half also. Uh, Tunch, we'll get into, you'll get into more detail uh, about the Patriots offense uh, in the next segment uh, when you deliver your uh, serious XM scouting report. But just r really briefly, uh, can you expound a little bit on what yeah. Keith Butler was saying in terms of having to have essentially two game plans when you play the Patriots? Well, one of the things that, uh, that you notice that the New England Patriots do, say you're playing man coverage at and you're doing a good job with your man coverage. One of the things that the Patriots will do is they'll start bunching their receivers and keeping them closer together, and they'll run a lot of what we call rub routes or pick routes. It can't be a pick route because that's illegal. Now, if you're playing more zone, they're going to stretch you out a little bit more. You know, and that's the two things that I that I have seen uh, them do. If uh, if the run is working, they will start running the ball more. And one of the things that they do when they start running the ball effectively, that's when Tom Brady starts throwing more play action passes. And one of the things that's very impressive about Tom Brady is he really carries out the fakes on the play action pass. And I don't think that I've seen a quarterback that is more comfortable with his back to the defense. Most quarterbacks on play action pass, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, do the fake to the running back and then they'll snap their head around either because they don't want to get jacked in the back or maybe it's because they want to see the coverage quicker. Well, when uh, Tom Brady does it, he is not in that much of a hurry unless it's a quick throw like that one. But he does a great job of being very nonchalant in the play action pass. Okay, we're going to take a quick break now. And as promised, when we come back, Tunch's serious XM scouting report on the New England Patriots. Okay, welcome back to Steelers Live. I'm going to hand it off now to Tunchy Oaken for the Serious XM Scouting Report. I thought you weren't going to hand it off to me because you were afraid I was going to drop the ball, uh, Labs. But, you know, well, let's start with the offense. When you look at the New England Patriots, it does start with the offense. And when it starts with the offense, it starts with Tom Brady. And one of the things that... When I am convinced, uh, every year I'm convinced that Tom Brady, uh, now at 41, does not have the same fastball that he used to. I see a lot more touch passes. I see a lot more flat passes, a lot more screens, uh, a lot more throws like that where the ball just hangs in the air. And right when I think that he's lost his fast fastball, he throws a laser. He throws a frozen rope. Uh, just like that one into Edelman. And one of the things that he, he made a throw against the Miami Dolphins to Edelman in the middle of the field, it was 30 yards in the air and it never got higher than six feet off the ground. So at 41, he still got that fastball, but he also has the touch pass. You know, he throws a lot of fat, flat routes, especially to James White, who is their leading receiver. But he also throws a lot of checkdowns and he'll throw a lot of screens. And he does do a great job of spreading the ball around. And you know, when Julian Edelman was uh, on that uh, uh, suspended list for four weeks, uh, James White became the next Julian Edelman. And one of the things that we saw in, in, uh, uh, in James White was they used him a lot like we used Le'Veon Bell. You split him out to the left, you put him in the slot, you have him coming out of the, uh, out of the backfield. Now Julian Edelman's back and he's being Julian Edelman. And so now that you've got a, an interesting situation where they move all their guys along, around. Gronk, obviously, uh, is still the big stud uh, on that offense. He's very, very physical. I tell you what, he's got probably the biggest elbow brace I've ever seen uh, in my life. But you know what? He does a great job of coming off the ball. They do move him around. Uh, he's got the speed to get behind the secondary. And one, once again, you've heard Mike Tomlin talk about it. He is a matchup problem. Uh, he's much bigger than the defensive backs. Eh, he's much bigger than the linebackers, but he's usually 
faster. He's got great hands. It does a great job of catching the ball in traffic, and he's very, very physical. The guy that we haven't seen is Josh Gordon. And Josh Gordon, uh, we remember from his days at Cleveland, and he's got the speed to get beyond uh, the secondary. But you know what I've noticed about Josh Gordon that I didn't notice when he was in Cleveland is the fact that, man, he'll run the quick slants, he'll run the crossing route, and he's got a lot better hands. And he does a pretty darn good job of catching the ball in traffic. And there's one thing else, one more thing about him. When he's got the ball in his hands, he does a great job of breaking tackles, and he's fast enough to run away from guys. And uh, Sony Michelle is their number one draft pick. He is their running back, and he's a squat monster at about 215, 5'11". Uh, one of the things that I've noticed about Sony Michelle, though, is that when he's out in space, when he's out on the perimeter, he is really good. He's fast. He's got great balance. He's got enough shift from him, and he's got some power. But the one thing that I noticed that when he's running in between the tackles, he doesn't do a good job of finding the hole. A lot of times, he ends up running into the backside of his offensive lineman. And I think, you know, maybe he's just getting used to the NFL and trying to find where uh, the crease is, but he's much better in space out on the perimeter than he is between the tackles. And when you look at their defense on the defensive side of the ball labs, there's nobody that scares you. They don't have a great pass rusher. The best pass rusher is Trey Flowers. Now, he's got six sacks, but he's more of an effort sack guy. He doesn't have that great move. He doesn't have the great speed, uh, but he does finish plays. Uh, Malcolm Brown is uh, on the inside. He does a good job. The linebackers, my favorite is Dante Hightower. He's lost a step or two over the last couple of years, but he is still the old school physical thumper. He's like a bigger version of Vince Williams. Uh, he plays downhill. Van Noy's he, he is, Van Noy rather, is uh, more of the finesse run and chase guy. Uh, they're, you know, they're, you can run on this defense. And their secondary, uh, you know, their secondary is not great. Uh, you know, they uh, they got uh, McCourty's twin brother, uh, Jason, playing corner now. Devin's the safety. Uh, Patrick Chung is the box safety. Uh, and, uh, you know, these guys, the, their safeties will come up and play. They're pretty good. Uh, but, I, look. I think that Ben could throw the ball on these guys, and Miami tortured them in the running game. If we can start running the ball effectively, then that's going to open the passing game as well. Okay, Tunch, thank you for that. And now, as I've been told, this is the most critical part of this show, and I'm going to read this so I do not mess it up because I've been told bad things would happen to me if I did. Uh, for our Steelers Nation Unite members, the key word today is nation. So all you have to do is log on to SteelersNationUnite.com, enter the keyword nation to earn your yards. That, once again, the keyword is nation. Okay, thanks for watching today. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. We'll have your status report for you. Uh, we may even have some sort of determination on the place kicker situation, and we'll also have Pursuta's plays to ponder. For Tunch Ilkin, I'm not Missy Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow at 4 p.m.